what we see as truth is not what God sees as truth. Remember, on this path, what you're looking at is what is God's truth, not what is your own truth. So when I, when I was in the first century being hung on the stake, I wasn't uh, looking at, you know, I, I, I didn't have an emotion then of feeling persecuted. No. Because I knew that I wasn't. No. Because I knew God's truth and that was that my soul was still free no matter what people tried to do to my material body. Does that make sense? So if I was believing that I was persecuted in that moment, it would be because I had a false belief inside of myself that needs to be released in that moment that I can that I can choose to release. So getting back to your example about the slave spirit, what it could have done in that state of in the shed is he could have fully released his fear and terror, and then underneath the fear and terror would be the you know, the feeling of you know being persecuted or being tortured, and he could have released that emotion completely and allowed himself to get into a state of complete calm. Now now. He couldn't do that given the emotional injuries that he already had. He would have to have been pretty close to a one with God to actually do that. But that's something that could occur. So often when we're looking at situations here on the earth, we're saying to ourselves, well, this is how it really is now. And we, and we don't see how God sees it. We, we're only seeing it how we're seeing it. So he could have chosen to go into his emotions. And if he released the causal emotion of being persecuted, the, the slave owner, the master, would have probably chosen another person to imprison in that way. Rather than, if the master didn't change his emotion, he would have chosen another person rather than that person, because that person's law of attraction would have changed. See, the problem is today is the majority of do, do not trust law of attraction. That's really the issue here. We don't believe, you don't, many of us do not have a belief in our hearts that if I change a causal emotion, my law of attraction will change. We don't have that belief. It is a truth that we do not believe. And so what we do then is we justify. We say, oh, what's the point in me feeling this emotion of rejection? Nothing is going to change in my life if I feel that emotion. And I will have just cried for four weeks or eight weeks or however long it's going to take to feel this emotion, and nothing will change. I don't have a hope or a belief inside of me that anything will change. But the truth is that if I do deal with that core emotion, something will actually change instantly, and I've never had that experience my entire life of seeing the relationship between changing a core emotion and seeing the law of, 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 of attraction change. So until you have your first experience of your law of attraction changing, you won't believe what I'm saying to you. Until that... Go, until you go through that emotion. Is that, is uh, that yeah, sense? I believe that. It's just, um, I'm just no, thinking. I'm sorry, but you do not. Your question tells me you do not. So, you see, this is where we can often tell us ourselves in our mind like that we believe something, but that belief is yet to fully enter our heart. Our belief, that belief has fully entered our heart. So, so, in your case, you believe completely in your mind that if you change a core emotion, your law of attraction will change. But in your heart, which drove your question, you do not believe the law of attraction will affect even an event where a man is in prison being persecuted. And I'm saying to you, yes, it will affect that event, just like it will affect every other event when the core emotion is dealt with. Does that make sense? Whereas at the moment, in your heart, you don't see how that can be the case. So, so that, that is the answer to give to all the politicians who are going off to Afghanistan and Iraq and Iraq and are fighting all those wars because they're believing that they're fighting evil, that they just have to believe in what you're saying and everything will change. Yes, everything will change. And the, and the truth is that they are not fighting evil, they are creating more evil. Mm. That's what the truth is. And it's because of an emotion inside of themselves that they think that they have, and that they think they have the right to oppress another person in order to combat so-called evil, and they're actually now using evil to create to combat evil. That's what they're doing. And of course, it's never going to work. And that's why it never does work. And that's why all these wars keep on happening, keep on happening, keep on happening, keep on happening, because nobody wants to accept the truth. And it, it gets back down to this statement. If I'm getting the same results, 
then I'm not changing the cause. What, and there's a, that other statement, well, how's it go? How stupid is it to keep doing the same thing over and over, getting the same result? And this is the trouble with the world today, is that we keep doing things, the same thing, over and over and over and over and over again, hoping for a different result. And it's not going to happen that way. We need to actually start addressing it at the core level, the emotional level. So yes, all of the people who go to war and all the people who want to send them to war all need to change something at the emotional level in their belief structure. And when that happens, wars will cease. The law of attraction will change when that happens. And that starts with each of us doing it ourselves. 